Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Old World Blues A to Z series which we're playing now as the Cyphers and we have Mesa Verde which I've never been to but we're led by Mnemonic and we have our past at Los Alamos before the war our tribal founders were scientists who worked at Los Alamos uh, Research Center when the Great War began they fled to Los Alamos and formed the tribes here or tribe here with their schematics used as often as possible now we have a generic focus tree and we are completely tribal Oh my god. I'm going to go insane with this uh, this campaign, probably. Because this is going to be really brutal. But I've never actually gone through the focus tree, I think, but our gods. Since our tribe first arose from the ashes of the great cleansing, we've been loyal to our gods to appease their wrath, the very wrath that brought the flames in our world. We must use one god in particular to pay tribute to and worship, who are our gods. When the world fell and all is forgotten, we found our gods. And our, the forgotten places. Among the stars and the hills, we found our gods. Our gods are mighty, our gods are great. They watch us at all times, listen to us while we make our offerings. With them at our side, we are prosperous. Mother Earth? The mountain gods. Mountain gods? What is that? We worship the sun gods. Oh. Um, sun gods, mountain gods, are legends. There's a time when a tribe faced much peril, from the dangers of the little waste to the threats of the other tribes, luckily. A legendary hero rose from our tribe as a savior. What the heck is winter mountain gods? Oh, uh, well, you never know what, what you might find here. Schematics, origins, military origins, tribal buffs, pathfinders, clan fighting, warrior cult. That's pretty good. Nomad. Um, nocturnal warriors, god in the cave. Ooh, that's really good too. Lessons of the outsiders. Get to the land. Um, Oregon buffs, Texan buffs, miscellaneous buffs. Caravan, ooh, caravan militias. Eh, they're not bad. They're okay. We have buffs around here, but I'm not sure where where it is. Well, Seth Rangers, railway construction stuff, Nikon, schematics, but ooh, these aren't schematics. Well, my nutrition isn't super great. Heat nutrition is okay. Um, we're in Colorado, so we'll maybe go with the Mountain Gods? Um, Robco, West. Oh, they're over here? Oh, Tribal Buffs. Strength in numbers. Oh, that's not bad. Okay, so we get just a bonus here. And mountain more technical, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, and then the coming era. The elders of our tribe are called a great council and are communicating with the spirits of our ancestors to determine our next move. The answer of the spirits shall determine whether we live in the era of war or peace. Among all tribes there are legendary figures, those who stand above the common men and women, who is those who are chosen by the spirits to lead and rule to grow in strong and powerful. They have brought us prosperity and we shall remember them to this day. Uh, warrior of legend, the shaman of legend. I don't want builder of legend. Also, I will probably use the fast justification war mod just because I don't want to wait that long to go to war with people. And, uh, yeah. we gotta look at this too. There we go. We are so far beyond everybody. It's not for good. Declaration of an error, though. The spirits whisper to us. The voice is lost in the whim. They instruct, they teach, they guide us. And we listen. We follow them resolutely into the new era. The greatest era. Era of war. Oh, that's not bad. Army speaking is pretty good. Era of migration. Oh, that's not bad. It's okay. Era of prosperity. We get 1,200, that's not bad, 1,200 manpower is not bad. Daily political power, which I do like a lot. Hmm. We're going to probably be a long time, long range for this campaign, a long time, so let's get that political power. Era prosperity. Hmm. Tribal reformation. There are tribes the same for years on its own. Its population is growing in mass, and war looms on every side of us. The tribe now, more than ever, requires a strong leader. So, a couple things out here first when we start. We're going to get the Golden Gecko because it's not much, but I like this ability. A little, tiny bit more political power. Passive cast is always good. Um, with us being ruler, it's not bad. We could use this one for more compliance growth speed, which would be good. And daily command power game, which is okay. I do want more political power if possible, but we also need to get some uh, base bench warfare. Huh? Army XP. So. so what is this one? The War Chief. Elite Support. Army XP. Attack and just let's just fight World War Times. The Shaman. Uh, recruit of a population, weekly war support, and coordination. That's different. Interesting. The God in the Cave. That's actually really cool. More max planning and max organization. I like that actually quite a bit. Huh. The Elder, people support. The High Council, not bad. And yeah, this was okay. And this is for Ruler, where we're currently at with political power. Test plus 10% political power gain. Ooh, that's not bad. That's pretty good. I like the peepee -pee there. And the Warrior's Duty. Even more political power. Wow, that's a lot of political power. I want that political power, but we're from Los Alamos. We have the, our past from there. So, it makes more sense for us to probably go with the Shaman, in all honesty. 
The great cleansing came about because of our people's lack of faith. We must not make the same mistake. Installing a holy man, the shaman is their leader, can help prevent this and bring enlightenment to our people. Just role playing wise, that just makes more sense to me as we're going to go down a uh, conventional worker, probably. So. so, the shaman, eh? And then religious fervor. The shaman have declared a holy war. The heathens of the world must be saved from their own ignorance and stupidity, and the destiny imposed on us is to bring light to them. Young, hot-blooded men flock to join the warband. God in the cave. The tri whole tribe, in particular the zealous warbands, answer to our god. They know not to question their orders, as their orders come from the god themselves. Peculiarly, uh, the gods only seem to communicate with the shaman. Interesting. In the meantime, uh, let's get some daily air XP, or I guess army XP, I should really say. Waste on economy is not great, but whatever. Uh, what do we have here? Infantry. Um, I want to wait to get over here, maybe. Why not? Uh, never enough political power, right? I know. What more construction deal would be nice? So, travel defense. More HP for travel defense, more entrenchment. Above all, our tribe must be defended from the nations surrounding us. The dangers of the wasteland have prepared us for this, and our warriors know a doctrine of defense. Traditional weapons. Ooh. Our scavengers will have a chance to return from successful scavenging missions with additional units of scavenged equipment. All throughout the wasteland, traditional weapons are scattered about. Our warriors' bands often scavenge us parts of these weapons, and we may be able to reforge them with some effort. The growing village. As our population expands, so does the village, and the great influx of people have created a greater source of weaponry and food for our people. The warriors' cult. Ooh. From the very beginning of our tribe's life, we have a cult of warriors dedicated to protecting the members of our tribe. They have had rigorous training and a life of experience. Hello. Binary warriors, huh? Alright. This is a little again. I would like more stability as well. Uh, yeah, I get the stability, why not? Um, honestly, let's get the weekly war sport, maybe? So then, clan fighting style. Trouble, hard paths. One important part of our trouble war warrior bands are pathfinders. Scouts who know the way sound like the back of their hand. With these pathfinders making our warrior bands, they are sure to be faster and most strength. Clan fighting style. Our tribe is a distinct fighting style, adopted due to the common lack of weaponry and dogmatic training of our warriors. This makes us much better fighters all around. Young blood combat recruits. Ooh. Allowing our, even the very youngest of our tribe to engage in combat rituals will provide a greater base for our warrior bands and allow them to be much greater warriors in the future. And champions of our tribe. With the worst part, combo casualties. The greatest of our warriors are champions. Glorified members of the tribe will become revered elders or respected chiefs in the future. The dream of glory and honor is so prevalent that many in our tribe will join to become like these champions. Ooh, revered elders. The greatest elders of our tribes are, wi are wise and knowledgeable and guide our people towards a great destiny. Sacred land. The land in which our tribe is settled is sacred land, blessed by the gods. Outsiders and heathens must not be allowed to tarnish our sacred land, so we must defend with all we have. Tribal unification. Annexation cost during peace conferences. That's different. Ooh, compliance growth speed, too. Our tribe contains people of different clans and creeds, clans and creeds, and way one day contain people of very different tribes. It's important to instill a sense of tribal unification to keep them under heel and gifts of the land. In return for protection of the sacred land of the gods, we are granted bountiful gifts from the land. Word of the spirits. Our spirits speak to our elders and reveal great secrets to them. Some say it's just radiation poisoning from nuclear waste nearby. And a tribal hub. As the tribe grows ever more, our village has become something more of a city, allowing much more industry and causing many to flock to us for trade. And now here we are at everybody. It is only July 15th, 2278. We've lost 700 men ish while killing off 5,400 of the foragers. And uh, yeah, we're doing okay. We're not doing great, but we're doing not okay. Not, not necessarily bad. They're out of manpower, which is a great thing for us. And here are divisions, real quick. We got Binary Wars, 20 combo with Recon, Demo Equipment. We do need to throw some anti tank on there, but we don't have any anti tank. We're out of radios, which kind of sucks. Right now, we're trying to get up here so we can uh, eventually destroy some enemy divisions. Uh, but we have some special forces, too. They're 16 combo with, not, not quite ideal. Let's make them at least 20 combo with. And do we have any fire teams? Demos. We'll throw on some demo companies and some fire teams, maybe. For funsies, so these guys are at least a little bit okay. And special forces are going to go this way, and then that way. So that this way we can encircle some divisions, destroy them, and uh, hopefully kill all the forgers, even though they have some volunteers from the free fighters. They have division, 10 divisions, we have 9. I think we'll be okay in the end. Antidote Souls doing stuff. Hopefully they don't do too, like, too many crazy, crazy uh, radical things. And uh, yeah, we're doing. We're doing. Oh, well, now we spelled out a lot of the guys here. Just because we could, we uh, haven't raised a conscription level yet. Hopefully we don't have to, um, but uh, we're doing all right. Basic generation, nice. We've got this guy down here at Eastman. 
Bright Eye Wounds. We want Intellectual, so I figured we might as well grab them. We won't always use that path, but whatever. Uh, I guess technically we really wanted to. We could circle this guy first. Yeah, why not? And there you go. Have fun with your... With your... With this individual division. Do that anyways, because we can. Doesn't matter. And the division is dead. Yay! So can you guys go up there? That's five divisions are Holy crap. You know what? Just go in. We should actually have these guys done. If you go there and, and destroy them here, that'd be great. So at this point, I think they're pretty much taken care of. Um, but we've done some more divisions too, like tribal warpaint. We can use warpaint on our wards to intimidate and scare our enemies, causing our warband to be more proficient in breaking enemy lines of morale. The warband muster. So it may be necessary for a tribe to go to war, whether to defend our sacred land or expand. Oh, hello. Um, or expand our tribe once muster war uh, bands, train to equip uh, every member of the tribe again. I'll let them come for now. Healing powder. Years of living out the land has led to several members of our tribe becoming respected apothecaries. They create healing powers from flowers and roots and can aid our wards and nurse them back to health. The nomad warriors. Our tribe comes from a nomad background after moving where we are unsettled. This is reflected by the attitude of our warriors who are more easily able to traverse the landscape without becoming disorganized. Hello. That's interesting. You guys stand over there and just do that. Special forces will come over here and do this. That would be fantastic. Land doctrine, yes, we're getting through it. We got most of it done already, which is nice. This is concerned, which is good. Yeah, I'll go grab all that stuff too, because that's very useful. And we also did perfecting secrets. The secrets of the world are slowly being discovered by our apothe apothecaries. They're developing new ways of healing to support our war bands of battle. Uh, tribal offerings are connected links to other tribes through traders brought close to and cultural diplomatic links as well. Should we choose, we may be able to form alliances with other tribes to protect each other, of course. <clears throat> Outsiders agreements. With some agreements constantly being made with outsiders, more and more of goods and resources are needed to be traded. Thankfully, our people are willing to be more sparing. Strength in numbers. Ooh. The more warriors we can send into battle, the greater chance we have of defeating our enemies. We must adapt our doctrine for this, allowing more of our warriors to attack at once. Hardened by the wasteland. Ooh, good. Oh, well, we got the fortress done. Finally, thank the Lord. My God, that only took us several years. Extensive, extensive experience in the wasteland. Uh, has hardened our warriors and our people. Many more of our people, accustomed to the dangers of the wasteland, join our warband every day. So, who do we want to go to war with next? Rebel Circle Junction. It shouldn't be too difficult to take out, but yeah, no, yeah, never know. They got, oh, what is it, restless, huh? Thousand manpower, they've got quite, quite a few divisions. But we'll see. It might just take, end up taking just as long as last time, but you know what? Like I said, we'll see. We'll have a good time with them no matter what. Now, we have this. We're going to do this. We're going to train. Okay, never mind. We're already really good. Um, logistics, uh, come back up here. We're going to grab you real quick. And what else? Well, we've got some coring stuff, so... We want to core as fast as we possibly can. So we send pacification. Militias are fine. Uh, working on the radio still. We need a spot of energy, really. Uh, we need a lot of things, actually. Oh, good God. We're trying to build more infrastructure, too. So Lots of infrastructure. Which is pretty normal for me on this channel. But. So we're going to do all this. The, the war beats. War drums beat. All across the tribe, the drums of war beat. Our war band is hardy, strong, and experienced. And the unit tests our strength in battle. Perhaps we should let them. Trade posts. <coughs> with trade with, uh, with other trades increasing, we should create trade posts, expand our trade network, and bring in more goods and weaponry. Tribal volunteers are close ties with other trading tribes, led to our war brand expressing their desire to fight with, with and for other tribes, and maybe useful experience for them. Well, let's see what happens over here. They immediately start attacking us. 57, 56, nice. Should do fine. I'm not super concerned about it. Oh, look at that. Infantry uh, or special forces. Oh, that's fine. Whatever. I forgot about that. Let them have fun. Um, tribal volunteers, tribal mercenaries. As our tribal warband socialize with other nations' militaries, then they begin to have closer ties. Many of our warband now express interest in fighting foreign wars in times of peace. This could be profitable venture, of course. And more warriors. Ooh, more HP. Nice. With extensive experience in other wars, and knowledge rep reaped from other tribes, their warriors are among the greatest. Some claim they're even more immortals. They very, very rarely fall in battle. Oh, we also have a cup of tea here, too. Trading power. Our extensive trade and mercenary network is made as almost essential to the rest of the world. As the old world adage goes, we keep our friends closer and our enemies closer. Have they stopped attacking? Well, that's not ideal. Clients is only 12%, but we'll get there. We're doing okay? You're doing alright? We're running out of manpower slowly, but we have enough political power that I'm not super concerned about it. Uh, military society. A free city? More month population? Why not? Uh, research speed's okay. Don't really need that one. I'll yeah, we'll do that once. Why not? We got the political power for it. We can do that. 
Strength in numbers, travel offerings, I think you read earlier, so. Yeah. Trading firearms. Our continued link with other tribes who trade has led to a more advanced nations willing to trade with us. They give us weapons in exchange for goods, and weapons that are more powerful than those we use. Lessons of the outsiders. Expansive trade has led to many of the outsiders teaching us their ways and the culture. Many of our warband note the defensive lessons the other insular nations have given them. Death powder pots. The outsider tribes we trade with have strange weapons, bots of death, powder, that create a great fury of divine fire. We've offered a trade zone to try and uh, understand the secrets. Six figures, or six finger of production lines. The death powder pots we've discovered have extraordinary capabilities. Uh, we should devote our industry to crafting more. Very cool. Losses, 159 versus almost 700. Nice. Slowly running out of manpower, but you know what? Once we can core new Montrose, I'm not super concerned. Uh, in the meantime, we should probably try to create an agency, shall we not? If you have a good name for an in uh, uh, intelligence agency, please let me know in the comments below. We love. I'd love to use one as recommended by y'all. Oh, another to enforce defense. Oh my goodness. This is just racking up some army XP for us, which is delicious. Mm, yum 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 yum. Or nocturnal warriors. Ooh. Our warriors have some become more efficient at stealthily attacking in the night due to their experience and the best way surrounding our tribe. This metal will make them deadly in combat at night. Skirmish lines. Our tribal warbands are not proficient at skirmishing, allowing them to more efficiently supply themselves and defend themselves in the area and create a deadly line of defense. The Chief's Guard. Ooh. Chief Riley requests an elite bodyguard made up of the chosen few of our tribe, the deadliest and strongest, to protect him and his clan. Nice. And we're almost there when I'm going to go with this one. Beautiful. Let's see how much of Colorado we can really form. Uh, the Jabal Roundmasters. Certain uh, members of our tribe, now that we call Houndmasters, have perfected the art of training dogs, making them much easier to use as war dogs and aid as rewards. And that's why I wanted to get dogs to get more defense. And you get plus 50% more breakthrough with them. Man's best friend. The old world ad is just certainly true. Dogs are a man's best friend. These well trained hounds are now deadly proficient at breaking enemy lines. Oh, yeah. So we lost about what, a thousand? No, less than 300. Killing off 20, over 2,200. Beautiful, my friends. Eventually, research won't really matter too much, so then we can start pouring stuff into here. Honestly, I might actually start doing that right now. Because attacking the soft attack, I love. Ooh, so, ooh, that breakthrough. I gotta get that breakthrough, man. Ooh, fortifications. Let's we'll see if we actually use them or not. Ooh, we're struggling here. Because it's only one division attacking. Hardened by the wasteland. Very nice. Even more population and organization. Yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. They actually might go to war with Twin Mothers. Eh, we'll see. Uh, probably the next one we'll take out was probably Claim Jumpers and move our way up north. Because we're right we're right next to Arizona. These guys might attack us sometime, though, so we have to be really quite careful, probably, in all honesty. So we got off 2,000. Ooh, oh, oh! Land is failure. Oh, that's a big sad for him, but whatever. Um, they're out of Empire, so they should be uh, folding very, very soon. Now let's put down some resistance. So you have a tiny bit of manpower, hopefully, and we'll come down here and do this too. Much of forces would be nice. 18 combo width, that's pretty decent overall. Uh, I don't want to drink more. Special forces are what you really want. Oh, they're only 17 combo width. We can throw one more on there too, but we don't have enough uh, manpower for that currently. Let's just start pouring stuff. Maybe adaption doctrine? Cover it, yes. You can cover as fast as we possibly can, yeah, that'd be nice. And we're just constantly just beating them over the head. As much as humanly possible. But we, we don't have a lot of war support, but we're still getting plus point one per week, which is not, not very much, but we know whatever. Of course we're at war too, so that's something to remember too. Uh, over here, vehicle designers, planes, we don't have very much. We have fighters, so we'll probably go with the fighters option. Go ahead and do that, that sounds very nice. They're doing force defense, which is uh, not a bad idea for them, but our guys are doing, uh, doing all right. Research wise is fine, building up more roads, constantly building up more roads, which is okay. Compliance wise, we're at only 40% here, 49%. Ooh, how, how do you get much more here than here? I don't understand. I'm not gonna question it. There you go, good luck. You're probably not gonna get all that way, but whatever. Wow. Some divisions look okay. The militia is just very weak. We're just not with us. What are we missing? Well, we're not missing too much. We're missing motorized. <clears throat> I do want the doggos, though. Drum beats. The war drums beat. Gadwell beat. 
do I beat, 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 beat? Um, let's go with doggos. We can immediately start using them, maybe. Because with the doggos, they help put, put down resistance. Uh, Breakthrough, we don't get a ton more. We still get five. And you get bonus movement bonuses, which is pretty nice. Doggos. Good boys. Just trying to make the guy stronger and stronger and stronger. So, radio antenna groups, not bad. Overall, I'd say not too bad for the first video. Um, obviously, I'd like to finish at least this award before we are completely done, but there are no guarantees. Especially since these guys are just chucking soldiers in and out, in and out, in and out. They're running out of equipment, which is nice, especially anti tank. Uh, guns will get down there eventually, and they're already out of manpower, which is nice. Promise of loot. Looty booties. We're just going to take a helmet for a while. Well, it's probably going to take a while for us to get through these guys. But overall, the next time we start the next episode, the final episode probably, uh, we'll be going to War of the Claim Jumpers, all 27. And we record probably quite a bit of stuff. So if you enjoyed the first episode, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see what we can do about the rest of Colorado. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.